5G Pro View yeah. experience over here in Korea. For now, a 5G exclusive. So for people hoping to go home and have a full screen with lots of those POV streams, uh, I hope your phone is big. Yeah, you're going to need a bigger phone for that one. And maybe you can do it on a tablet as well. So Which yeah. is their game number one identity. So they're changing things up. Over the side of Hanwha Life, they've got some nice pickups here. I know I'm very excited to see LCK Trundle embrace a real answer to Sejuani. So a week two strategy being rolled out here. But their comp is definitely more difficult to execute. Can they make it about so one's matchup? Because the Aurelia kind of went begging in the 1v1 in game number one. And also, Freaka Freaks have a hell of a lot of physical damage. There is not a lot of magic damage on this squad. So see whether they can make that up as well as we get into game number two. Okay, Hanwha doing their very best to pilot the Fiora to a victory for Soan and the Afrika Freaks just wanting to be over and done with this game after about 20 minutes. This is a composition that gets online at about level 6 and will be able to find fights if they can find Hanwha Life in the right position. And we've seen the best of, you know, the Gragas Yasuo combo. It's yeah. very similar to what Afrika is running in previous games this season. We've also seen Hanwha Life try to use a Yasuo comp that could only team fight. And it was sad, Atlas, in game number two of their first series of the season. So we've seen the best and worst out of these Yasuo comps. It's just been a surprising yeah, amount of Yasuo yeah. um, out of nowhere in the summer season. So we'll see if Afrika can force fights because I feel like Humble Life have reliable win conditions, but they're a bit more non-standard and they're a bit more specific with setup required, and they didn't show the ability to pilot them in game number one. So... Humble Life, again, they've got options, but because they couldn't use them in game number one, we're waiting to see them uncoil in front of our eyes. Well, I mean, uh, Afrika Freaks just uncoiled in front of Key's eyes. That light binding did go wide. Tongue Lash is the one that landed. So Afrika with a huge advantage on the bottom side of the map, as you can see. Dread over here gets himself a leash on this Raptor Camp. We'll be able to take that one down relatively comfortably. Do I get a Trundle Minute? Oh my god, what, what? Papa Smithy, there's a, uh, there's a Hail of Blades Sichuani in this game. Uh, it's true. There is. It's Dread. Uh, so I'm, am I my, losing my mind, or is this a bit strange? So my Trundle minute's going to be delayed. So I'm talking about Hail of Blades, Sejuani. You're saying, sitting there saying we've never seen this before, and you're right. But what did we see in hard matchup for Sejuani, Atlas? We oh, saw. Oh, we did. Back in the day, the fleet, fleet footwork. footwork. Oh, no steal happening yeah. there. Mugen flashes as well. Lava forced out of mid. Like, a lot of things happen. You can going hyper aggressive, and this is a matchup that has worked out very well for the Silas. We, in fact, saw Faker in this exact position, I believe, against, was it against Yukal or somebody else? I'm not entirely sure, but this was something that the Silas was able to pilot very effectively. So a lot no, of it wasn't. Things, that was Akali. Definitely. A lot of things worth discussing are there. Very quickly, Yasuo has a good laning matchup into Silas because the ult steal gets him almost nothing. So yep. in terms of melee champions trading, you get through that shield with a Q and then you keep fighting. Hail of Blades, Sejuani is along the lines of the footwork Sejuani when it comes to some of those battle options. So Umti was taking that very often on Sejuani when he wanted to path aggressively. Also, Aftershock has a losing matchup into Trundle in, in a big way. right? Yeah. It's one of the reasons why Sejuani jumped up. It wasn't just, wow, really good with melee carries. It was the fact that Aftershock was better for tanking and way worse for damage and interacts with the Sejuani passive in a positive way because she gets so many free resists. However... You trundle ult while the aftershock is running, and as people know, you go into negative resist to Sejuani when your passive is no longer lingering because you lose so many stats. Yep. So the Hail of Blades actually a tech choice to answer in the 1v1 jungle matchup. So pretty cool to see. And that was pretty cool to see as well. That was about as good mechanically you could have played that. Meanwhile, on the bottom side of the map, though, Mujin looking for Senen, but doesn't get the pillar in the right position. They will get the heal and flash out, but that should have been a kill. Trundle ganks can be oh so big and against Tom Kench who always wants to be with a melee range for the Devour. Actually very difficult to position and Tom Kench often at the mercy of the Trundle pillar. I want to talk a little bit about Trundle because it's a pick that I picked up the moment the jungle changes came in because you saw many more level 3 fights around things like yep. Scuttles and level 2 fights and Trundle's level 2 is pretty decent for ganking but his level 3 is lethal for a 1v1 with this W actually available alongside the pillar. You've got the chomp, you've got the press the attack. You're a very good duelist in a 1v1 skirmish as the Trundle come level three. 
And obviously, stealing away resists from stage one isn't as bad as if aftershock is not as pronounced, but still really good. Yeah, her passive, the... her passive means that it will always get value, right? Taking the Halo Blades doesn't negate that. You always want to ult Sejuani's trunk. Yes. It's not quite as advantageous as the Aftershock interaction, but it's cool to see Mujin roll in a jungle that Korea has a very complicated relationship with. The first ever Korean jungle trundle was Cloud Templar hard randoming it yep. in a knockout best of five, and it always had kind of an ironic reputation since then. But the pick is just legit good against Sejuani. It's more reliable than the cane that we know Ning prefers to use. Yeah. Here in the mid lane, you can see Lava actually finding his way back into this matchup, but Yukal is uh, pretty comfortable by the looks of things. 9CS in the lead with a wave crashing into his turret, and uh, he's going to be very, very comfortable. The uh, soldier build is what he's opted in for as well. He's got a sword, he's got a shield. He's well and truly ready to go on an adventure. Papa Smithy? Both teams roaming around everywhere. Cool well, draft. Lots to take away there. It's been fun Think considering it. You already outlined the... Shortcoming of Afrika is their very physical damage only identity. It's a lot of physical damage. And while Lava and Mujin will be a bit tanky, speaking of. Yep, aiming has to flash. That's a free one. When you get the pillar in the right spot, it's almost guaranteed death or flash. And uh, aiming certainly realizing that one. An aggressive teleport, I believe, was what led him to that position. Last cone utilized against him. In the 1v1, Keen has a 20 CS lead yeah. over Fiora. I think from level 3 onwards, after the latest changes, I would take Fiora. Fiora was even winning as old Aatrox after her latest round of buffs. Yep. This Last is, time we saw it as well, it was pretty uh, Fiora favored. This was a poor minion wave spot for so on that he hasn't been able to reset. Obviously, one of the few things Fiora can't do in the matchup is try to shove it in. If the lane's in a bad spot, and the flow-on effect here is that so on going to be a bit slower to get going in what will be a Fiora favorite matchup later. Yep, and also doesn't manage to go back and get the Tiamat as well. You can see that he definitely wanted that one, but the Reju beat double longsword comes in instead. He certainly wants that first item, but he won't be getting too much value out of those purchases until the recipe is completed. Mujin down towards the bottom side once again, and Lava's going to join him with that teleport this as you can cool. see. We're going to need that Devour to be on point from Sen. And remember, no flashes on the bottom side. It's a decent spell shield. But now that one's on cooldown. As, oh, that's a very dead Tom Kench. Aiming's going to follow as well. Look at the tanking of the turret working out beautifully. Sung Yun going to survive. That's going to be turret plates aplenty for Hanwha Life. Aftershock proc onto Key. He throws out the shield onto the team. Yes, Sung Yoon taking aggro wasn't ideal at the end, but otherwise, just a piece of poetry in motion from Hanwha Life. After a game one where they never got all their bearings together, that one was great to watch. Yeah, and now Lava actually goes back to buy some items because Papa Smithy, look at the disaster in the mid lane that's ensuing. If he didn't get both of those kills, I would have almost called that a lost situation. Yasuo Sejuani, not quite the mid lane Camille, but along those lines of the Sejuani synergy, and we talked about the trades for Yasuo, are winning ones. You're right, he needs two kills to just catch up. I don't even know whether he has. Like, that's two turret plates as well as a 30 CS advantage. Yukal's probably still in the lead. And they might actually just both be growing bounties if we keep seeing kills for Silas and farm bounties. Yeah. On the other side, so beautifully done from P. The double oh, life binding, one. just amazing. Gets the aftershock proc, hits the shield. Perfect dive. You know, Sung Yun taking aggro is not perfect, but otherwise, you know, there's nobody bot side, so it's not like he's going to die. Really nicely done in that scenario. And yeah, we get the goal confirmation. We exactly even Exactly even. Thankfully, I've still got it. Still got the calculations. But, but aiming and sending losing on the bottom yes. side. Yes. So, not ideal. Meanwhile, top side of the map, though, is still keen, trashing that matchup. And a freak of freaks with control here around the river. That is only a hijack on a glacial prison. That is not going to get them this infernal drake. So Afrika still able to pick things up here on this map. Mujin now does have his Barmy Cinder. Not quite with his Cinder Hulk just yet, but Dread is in a similar position. As our life finding line lands on Descendant, you can see so many of our players have been putting time into the Lux. But remember the type of player Key is. He was always the mage support player forever. This guy was so, so good on the ranged cast. And that's why when the season opened and Yumi and Lux were the meta supports, you were like, man, this guy is ready yeah. to go. Key was always counterpick Nami, counterpick mage support. Oh, that was so clean yep. from Kane. Gets out of the way of the repost really nicely. Yep. It's a hard matchup. So unlike a book. And this is nameplates on, it feels like a bit in the 1v1. Oh, yeah. So on is a capable top laner, but... But an incapable Fiora player so far. And look, even outside of that, 
it's key. So, yeah, he is a great top laner and is able to make a hard matchup. But remember him winning the counter matchup against Sword. He was Aatrox into Riven and won that matchup. And that was considered a hard counter on the Riven side. Nice stuff from Keen. But, you know, top side going better than expected for Afrika. The turret dive bot lane better than expected for Hanwha Life. And it's one of the rare times where it's actually taking Aftershock outside of a usual case. We don't usually see Aftershock against Tom Kench because he doesn't apply any engage pressure. But guess what Aftershock does allow? Wow. Clean, clean turret dive. Yeah. Well, apparently, uh, Keen, he might barely even need to turret dive this one as he's looking for more knockups. So I'm not going to get pulled back there. But every single time, if that repost is on cooldown, Keen kills so on in that position. A good start. With a good top laner, means a rougher laning phase than expected. Now so one's almost scaling top laner in a matchup that's very Fiora favored. But the flow on effects are also huge because Shelly should theoretically be free with uh, so on making his way back to lane now. Mujin has to gank a minion wave to stop Keen from taking all of the turret plates on the top side. And now, Afrika Freaks are in this first world problem situation where they're like, oh, we want to use Shelly on the top side, but we won't get enough value because already, Keen has smashed down that turret. And that's why I love that you bring on the clear on map flow on effects, because it's three turret plates for the Aatrox. The Fiora has to take a bad back, so Mujin goes top lane and take, instead of taking the Rift Herald, and even worse, Key roams top lane to try to help with a Rift Herald take, and watches the enemy take it against the on paper Fiora favored matchup. And it looks like Dread is still going to put Shelly towards the top side. He was considering it still a fair bit of time before Shelly has to be used to take down these turret plates. I'd like to see it on the bottom side of the map to really get some extra pressure, but now it looks like Dread is in here at the right time. The Umbral Dash is good. Keen throws down the ultimate. Dread makes sure that he gets in range for that one, but that guarantees the kill. And that is going to mean turret falls down, double plates going over to Keen, and this Aatrox is huge. 11-minute turret. For the Aatrox, and then he's going to start teleporting into fights, and best of luck with that. Dread waited out of range, came in the moment he saw Repost. Honestly, couldn't have been any better from Afrika's jungle top duo. Yep, Lava was looking for the knockup from the pillar, but the pillar missed the slight knockup interaction there, which is why you saw the hijack used on the last breath that hasn't necessarily been the greatest when it comes to synergies, especially on this Hanwha comp that don't have any knockups outside of... Uh, the displacement on that pillar. It just feels like we're getting an early game Sivir comp. It's going to be very much a Freaker trying to get their work done because for Sivir realistically can farm three items because we already know the armor stacking will be real yeah. on the side of Hanwha Live. So Freaker really is in their benefit to keep playing this aggressively because Hanwha Life can't manage that duality of stacking armor and buying core damage items pre-25-30 minutes. And I feel like now we need to talk about the thing about Yasuo that we don't get to talk about all that much, I'm which is the armor the armor shred of uh, the last breath being actually huge if you're going to be stacking the armor this much. We'll have a look at this one, though, because uh, Keen certainly killed so on real quick, and Dread came in to make sure that he couldn't escape. So on had to use her post defensively in the Wonder Force. Already shouldn't happen in the matchup because Fiora was losing by so much, and then Dread could profit up. So great communication, great read on a lane state that's not a common one in the matchup. Just a really good call from Afrika's top side. And that, that now means we have some uh, hilarious mismatches in terms of item timings oh in the 1v1. Yeah, and we've also got an Aegis of the Legion uh, already completed by Dread here as well on top of his Cinderhulk. He's also got Ninja Tabi. He is out farming Mujin by a bajillion in that jungle right now, or at least it feels like it. As Mujin's lucky to get himself a control ward there. Yukao coming down, wanting to steal away a red buff from his own team. Life Binding lands here as there's the last breath. They finally do get that knockup. Windwall's good. The last breath on the side of the Yasuo, though, is decent, but Yukao has to get out of there. Devour, that is a huge slow triple knockup and the kill at the end. Not quite enough to do it, but it looked real spicy. Hanwha walk away with the advantage. And there's the duality of the Afrika Freaks and their young lineup. They take a fight they shouldn't, Atlas. They take a fight where the synergies can come together. Trundle Pillar is an easy opening for the last breath. 
And given the future scaling, anything that injects gold now for Hanwha Life is priceless when it comes to those late game team fights that may never have came if they kept just playing around Keen. Yeah, and that's going to be two kills for Sangyu too, which is so huge. Finally able to get himself onto the board in that first column of the KDA, and this is what started it up once again. It's key playing some pretty nice locks. Trundle Pillar Yasuo, Trundle Pillar Swain. You don't think about it on paper, but it is. There's knockups to open up. Great synergy. Sung Yun in position to fight around. Keen is stranded in the mid lane, and he was a lot of the gold lead. Atlas is still a 1500 gold lead to a Freak of Freaks. Actually, it extends to 1700 gold lead when we come on screen. And yes, Afrika still hold the gold lead, but as a full AD comp against a team that can actually stack armor because they have tanks, the gold lead getting smaller and smaller for the scaling comp. Unreal Life is scaling in the truest sense of the world. Yeah, I mean, they have tanks. I guess they have Mujin, but is anybody else really going to be able to stack the Kava armor? can build some armor, potentially, but you're yeah. right. But Trundle is going to be really, really tanky. Yeah, and also that's going to be his entire job this game as well, so... That is a, enough of a problem in unto itself, despite the fact that he's going to be the only one that's going to fully benefit. Dread coming on in here. Just uh, getting some vision down. Afrika still playing as far up as they can. It is just the most disgusting CS advantage here for Keen. 40 as we check in. Where's our dive here? It's Mujin and Sung Yun walk up. Yeah, on the hunt. Now picked up here from Lava, thinking about trying to go for a potential chase. So Dread did have Glacial Prison available to him, could have stopped the influx of uh, Hamwa Life players, but decides that he doesn't want to invest that one. He's going to play it safe, make sure that he holds on to any engaged tools that he has. I feel like Cuz has really set the bar when it comes to playing Sejuani around the mid to late game and being able to start fights on a whim with that ultimate. Sejuani is such an interesting champ in that she has non-committal CC. I mean, Amumu mains was so mad when Sejuani yeah. was announced. I was like, wait, an arranged Amumu ult? And obviously the yep. AoE and the other things around it have changed over time. But the reason why I bring it up is, yes, she's non-committal in her ult, but if her ult misses, she's basically not a champion. Yeah. So you kind of have to pick your moment. I feel like so many Sejuanis are paralyzed with fear that they'll miss their ult. So they yep. just don't ult. So when you see Kurz walk in and make it happen and be clutch on Sejuani, you see the full maximum potential of the champ, but we always wait and see it unfold in front of our eyes. We're never quite sure how the Sejuani will look. And also, Kuz misses ults all the time. He's he's really good at just throwing it out off cooldown and trying to find his opportunity. And I think you can't be scared to try and go for those moves. And so on, looking for it once again. Back to the wall is Keen, but Key's going to move up. Sangin's here as well. It's a good flash. But that is Flash having to be invested alongside the ult to get out. And three members being invested means goodbye to the mid lane outer turret. So. Bottom lane outer turret might also go down as yeah. well as Dread and Yukal are right here. So yeah, they're going to lose way more than they gain as uh, Keen's Flash is all they got. Hanwha Life don't have a pain point except don't we have some nice team fight options. It's kind of where they're at right now. And unfortunately, the game is happening around those in the lanes because they have a losing Fiora matchup. They're really kind of miscast. Fiora feels like a great actress that you just don't like the role that they've been cast in right now yeah. because they're supposed to be able to take the win over the Aatrox. So around these ganks where we see people chase on to Keen, yes, you get an ult, yes, you get a flash, but you lose a lot. Yep, looks like Dread is going to be rushing towards Zeke's Convergence. I like this a lot. If he's going to be proactive with his ultimate play, we were talking about how good Kuz was. He also built that item alongside the Knight's Vow, which means that Afrika will be able to transition into a Civic composition very well as they move into the later stages. Yukal can hold them all up in the air, and Aiming can uh, treat them like a Bay Blade Arena. It's going to be very scary, despite being able to build armor. Didn't ever mention it, but Sung Yoon went for the Man Immune build that we see a little bit less yeah. of. After the turret dive was successful, I think he would kind of could have go, gone either way, so don't have a problem with this. It's a very quick Q of all, so at least he could always trim waves, even if his attack speed will be a lot later in terms of the evolution times. Here Mana, we'll wait and see the timing. Always going to be much later than an Ezreal, just because you don't have on-command ability to charge your tier when there aren't minions around. Yeah, exactly. You're going to Void Seeker as often as you can, but even that is going to get through your mana. Key pulled back with Infernal Chains, but he can eat some Honey Fruit if he would like to, but everyone is scared of Keen at this point in time, and Key re remembers that just there. Lava here on the bottom side. We'll see whether him and Yukal are still able to juke it out. Looks like Lava's giving Yukal a lot of respect. 
as Afrika just seem to be able to shove these waves way more freely and effectively than Hanwar have been able to. Hanwar have never been able to wrestle back tempo despite being able to find team fights in their advantage. Afrika with all that map control atlas that you get with your ability to painlessly push waves, don't have to respect the enemy. Can also have Aatrox just play alone. Yeah. Doesn't, doesn't have a nope button, but he knows to leave the turret now as they can just say no but side. leave. Yeah. They run the map, and it feels like Hanwha Life are just trying to handshake a team fight where Afrika keep doing what they're doing outside of one mistake, walking out too far in their red side jungle. It doesn't matter what Hanwha Life's team fight looks like if they never get one. Well, that is going to be the missed ultimate. I like it from Dread. Went for the attempt, as uh, the supercharger was very quick on the fingers there from Sangin, so nicely done. Wonder what chat's spamming right now. <laughs> Hopefully that means that Humble Life will be able to more aggressively push out a couple of minion waves while the ult will inevitably be on cooldown. Yeah, not exactly the longest cooldown for the Glacial Prison at this stage of the game. Level 11 now for Dread. So it is going to go down just a little bit. You know what's bad where Sichuani missing ult is actually really important to allow Hummer Life to farm for a bit. Yeah. In multiple lanes, but that's just kind of been where we're at in this game. Back Three turrets away. to one is going to be that score line here as the entire outer ring has been taken. There is uh, almost a free one on the top side though. That inner turret is a hair's breadth away from being dead. Loving the Steric's choice from the Yasuo. And you might say, but he's winning in farm. Why not go for a snowball IE? Afrika want to fight before any of those armor items are there, even for Mujin, let alone yeah. anyone else. So why not go for the one where you just spam R and you take whichever one you get as the Yasuo. You don't have to think about your timing when you've already got some defensive utility. Yep, not to mention you want to be activating that as quickly as possible given the armor penetration that you'll have available to you. Keen is going to get bullied away from this blue buff as so on. Doesn't actually pull the trigger on the grand challenge. Saw so Keen not wanting to go for that 1v1. Didn't know where the rest of Hama were on this map. So we'll be able to get rid of the Aatrox. A lot of big gold leads. On the left side of your screen, only Song here has a good amount of gold, and even then, no bounties. In fact, I imagine that's just about time of farming here, because 250 gold bounty on Sivir, despite having no kills. Yeah, that is a big one. That's actually a very weird stat as well, because he's behind in farm by 10 against his opponent. So what happened is, you notice when we saw Hama Life being scared to hit minion waves. In that time, Sivir just farmed a lot in a short amount of time yep. and grew up a bounty out of nowhere. And now it's up to about 300. Also had a few turret plates under his belt as well, which is uh, the location of a lot of this gold lead to the tune of about 3,000, aiming with quick fingers there. On the spell shield, he's going to stop that Void Seeker, but this is the turret that I was talking about. Very easy money to pick up on this map to extend that lead even further. And it's just so hard for Hanwha Life to change this game. Afrika continue to play close to a perfect game for the comp they were given because there was a lot of different headaches yeah. to consider. All we can say is Afrika's comp easy to execute. Hanwha Life has a lot of answers, but right now hasn't been able to use them kind of like game number one. Well, the In problem was is that we started this game and Afrika said win lane, win game, and they won lane by a lot in their solos. And bottom side of the map winning was just not enough to get Hanwha any further back into this game. You can see Aiming's even able to pick up some uh, blue buffs here because there's a Yasuo and an Aatrox. Doesn't have to contend for anybody else wanting to get any mana back. But win lane win game doesn't usually encompass the top and bot comps that we had here. It's what happened though, so yep. was just some great play in top lane especially. Sangyun with double buff. And Sangyun does a lot of damage yeah, at he's the moment. Scary. However, so many plays like this where you throw down a pillar, you completely back away. Here we go. Yeah, it's Arctic Assault buffered really nicely, but it's not enough. Okay, Senen able to get the Devour and no one dead just yet. Mujin, the first to go down and the ultimate there from Yukal is going to secure it. It's two kills already here for the Afrika Freaks. No knockup is going to come in as so on. Decent flash there trying to lunge around this fight, but the resets were there for the Aatrox. See you later, Hanwell Life, and welcome to Baron, Afrika Freaks. Perfect time for a fight. Afrika finally say, let's go, and oh boy, it's with Keen in position. They that was a the Baron, ace. And it's another Baron super early for Afrika Freaks. This is what we saw out of Kingzone last week. This is the kind of decisive play that we were watching out of them and we were praising them for so much. As the Afrika Freaks have done it. They've done their homework. It's been a lot of uh, Sejuani comps for both of these teams, but man, this buffering of uh, the Arctic Assault was beautiful. It's such a desperate engage from Hummer Life because they just want to fight. They desperately want to fight. But they so easily turn by Tom Kench. And then Keen's in the back line. 
while Yasuo has the Zeke's Convergence and the ability to just hit whoever he damn wants. Yeah. Oh man, the Zeke's Convergence on top of the Yasuo. I didn't even notice. I thought it was definitely going to be on the Sivir, but that was great. The adaptation. Freak of Freaks very happy. As, uh, it's another ultimate, but that's a... Yeah, okay. Good stopwatch. Not good enough. Bot lane dive. Beautiful from Hanwha Life. Unfortunately, from there, top lane losing as the cascading dominoes are so clear in this game. A top difference game might end really early. And while that bottom lane dive was happening, remember that Yuka was getting just the most gigantic lead in the mid lane when it comes to creeps and turret plates that actually the goal didn't change after that happened. And uh, if you have a look at it now, a Freak of Freaks are ahead by 10k. It is a gigantic lead at 25 minutes. Should be a game ending one, Atlas. Very difficult to reconcile how Hanwha Life get the fight they wanted later. Later's never coming if a Freak keep breaking the bases. Yeah, and speaking of breaking things, Papa, I mean, we were talking about this series. I was talking about Hanwha before San the Sandbox series, thinking they had some opportunities. Speaking of which, Ultimate does fly in. Yukal going aggressive on the bottom side, just dashing through some minion waves. I thought he was fighting someone. He wasn't actually, as now Hanwha are looking for him. Nice dodge on a lot of the abilities. Finds the ultimate once again. Onto Lavu, goes into his Zonyas. Grand Challenges popped very early, but the Devour denies any sort of re-engage as Keen. Looking for more. Repost does nothing, and Hanwha, they have nothing. Even though it was 1v3 for a bit, it's just a prank from Hanwha Life. They know they can't hard engage, and with the Baron still up, they're trying to break the base again. Yep. Inhibitor turret should be going down here. The inhibitor was dealt with, of course, by Yukal in the meantime. They feel like they've taken just enough here as Yukal doesn't have a lot of health bar left and really wants to buy that Infinity Edge so that he can have some fun with it before this game is over. That fun means we're probably going to have quite a long break, Atlas. This yeah. has uh, been two very fast games, even though the lull states were actually long and both of them. Game number one and game number two, the kills weren't necessarily backing up the play, especially in game number one. So IE is done. Sterix was there earlier. Look at how much wallet smacking there is, Atlas. This is gigantic. 3,000 gold in the top lane, and I feel like Keen has barely even been in a lot of these fights. He's fashioned himself for 2-0-3, but I don't even know where it's come from. I feel like the Yasuo was absolutely huge in a lot of these, and he's ahead by 2.5k himself. As our resident wallet smacking analyst, <laughs> what brand is the Afrika wallet this game and what brand is the Hanwha Life wallet because I feel like we've got some brand names going on here. yeah well I mean there's definitely some no frills on the side of Hanwha Life because they have been playing relatively low interactive uh, League how, of Legends and just falling this? over how about it's on the Afrika side the Gucci wallet you know, yeah nice I'm thinking designer yeah okay Gucci. and it's like rip curl or something on the side <laughs> of Hanwha Life <laughs> straight from Torquay into the back pocket of Hanwha Life because what is sports. a rip curl wallet that you do you leave work early and you go to surf yeah, and you that's go all they can do and, and it also, I mean, it's not going to get opened by itself. Thankfully, it's got that sweet, classy Velcro there. I completely understand, Papa Smee. That's great. Does it allow you to, you know, swim around more comfortably in the death chamber as well? It's You're like... going to have to ask <laughs> Humble Life, Atlas. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, well, the Louis Vuitton's looking good on uh, Afrika Freaks. I think they've all chosen a different designer brand. I don't think it's all Gucci on this side, although it is, to be perfectly no, honest. No, it definitely is all Gucci. <laughs> all Gucci. On the Afrika side, no face not crying after this one. That's no. just tears of joy. Yeah. In fact, he might be crying, but like you say, it is going to be those tears of joy. As, uh, the inhibitor is now what's going to be under siege. Afrika Freaks thinking about playing some League of Legends now, using their sweet new toys they picked up from the shot. Light Binding is going to land there, but Keen able to Umbral Dash to get out of the way. Still, Afrika just looks like they're playing with their food right now. Light finding again lands. Ultimate is going to be followed up though as Key takes about half of his health bar in damage. So on dealing with a super creep wave as a freaker are gonna play this one by the book. Spending some time up towards this inhibitor turret. Okay, Yuko, Grand Challenge is down. Good positioning there from Soan as Senen gets on over. Actually able to get there. The flash wasn't late enough. Oh, the two-man hold up with the last breath, but he's just gonna die. You always get excited by it as Sang Yoon. As the evolution on the queue finishes off the piggy, as Afrika finish off the base, but lose two of their members. Uh-oh. Yukal's wallet only has one C on it. That's the wrong Gucci Atlas. <laughs> no. It's been off in this one, unfortunately. And yeah. It's, it's well caught. It's not Gucci when you buy it at the station, Yukal. Come <laughs> on, man. But it was such a bargain. It was like $30 <laughs> only. Yeah, no, it doesn't work like that.
Come on. Do you think Yukal knows how much a Gucci wallet costs? I don't think he does. Or maybe. I don't know. After his performance on KT, I would have paid a bit for him. Well, this performance was uh, a little bit to be desired. Walked up and he'll say he was baiting for the top inhibitor to go down. I think they could have got it without his death. Yeah, and uh, Senen was unable to get over the wall there with him as well because I believe that's just not how that works anymore. Uh, the nerf to Tom Kench being pretty outspoken in uh, that particular exchange, but uh, the damage had been done largely, as like you say, they were baiting for the top inhibitor. I mean, three inhibitors down, so it's yeah. still a good game I mean, this, this game is still about as over oh, as it yeah. can be. Two Infernal Drakes, a Cloud Drake so you can move far to, faster towards the, the uh, enemy. You never want to say it because you're like, ooh, all AD damage, but can you remember the, all the games where one team on paper had the scaling, fell behind and caught back up? I can't this year. It nope. almost never, ever, ever happens. If you stay competitive, maybe, but if you're 10,000 gold down, you just never get there. The only example I have this year is Griffin against Harmwell Life when they were down 8k. This is currently Harmwell Life down 8k, but uh, this is a composition that, like you say, you run at the opponent with uh, two Infernal Drakes and a Baron, and you're just going to win the fight, Pop, right? I don't... I mean, you're going to dance around in the mid lane waiting for a mini wave. Like, uh, at least they're having fun. Beep. Poro Bristle doesn't deserve that, Yukal. Well, that's the kind of game we have here. Hope yeah. you're having a sing and a dance at home. <laughs> we certainly are having one here at LOL Park. If you're an Afrika fan, not so much. If you're a Hanwha fan, Sangin's dad's not going to be as proud of him here today. He, of course, was in the audience. That being said, Sangin has been one of the players that's been actually doing stuff. Speaking of doing stuff, on the hunt has been popped here as Yukal looking to try and get some damage down onto Sangin. That Q still needs to be respected, and he does not have a GA completed. Great able to get out of the way here as uh, it's just inhibitors getting re killed. Uh, soon the super creeps will be too much to overwhelm um, our life. Their siege is desperately poor, but super minions can do it for them. Super minions push up. If you get the right connection, you dive. If you don't, you don't need to. So, yeah, Infernal freaks. Chain, speaking of connection, he's going to land really nicely there. Sungin has to go into his uh, his stopwatch very early. Lava is going to get pulled up into the sky. He's got his onions, though. Will be all right here as Keen diving into the back line. Taking matters into his own hands. Gets himself the... Reset on the ultimate, and now the Nexus turrets will finally be taken down, but not before. The ace is completed, so on. On the fountain is just going to have to wait as far back as he can and watch his Nexus get destroyed. Afrika with the clean 2-0. And also the explosive speed in which they could end both games around the 30-minute mark or earlier means the Afrika Freaks are on a streak, Atlas. They are two wins in a row. They take down SK Tun and Griffin, of course. Only suffering one defeat so far in game score, but still two and zero. Really uh, up there with King Zone in that first position when it comes to match score. So really exciting to see from those guys. But I want to hear this MVP interview and check out some of these highlights, Papa, because this is an Afrika that has really changed moving into summer, despite this dive being pretty good from off. Exactly. This was Hanwha Life's best moment of the series by far. The coaches would have loved it. It was definitely fantastic execution. But top lane and mid lane just rolled over. The mid lane more understandable. Yasuo yeah, the matchup into the Silas. The top side, a surprise for sure. And the end result was Afrika just kept running in three lanes. And the moment they did that, and moments like this on screen couldn't happen, there was just no ability for Sung Yoon to spread his lead from that turret dive into any effective team fights. They kind of just won, watched on in horror as Afrika grew their gold lead more and more in fairly non-interactive fashion. Yep, and then Keen teleports in behind this fight that had been started from Hanwha, and honestly, this was all she wrote at this point. I think right here it was about a 3,000 gold lead after this team fight and the ensuing Baron, it was instantly 10,000, and the game was done. And again, we just look up. We look at our papers and say, wait, who does Afrika play later this week? I'll have to see if I it's have a King Zone, Papa Smithy. Okay, well, King Zone have quite the interesting week. They face SK Telcom T1 slumping yep. after MSI into Afrika with their, honestly, first ascent of 2019. So if King Zone leave this week 2 0, it's suddenly a conspicuous 2 0, whatever SKT's fortunes at the moment. Uh, exactly, and I don't think King Zone have quite had that much. Uh, to struggle with so far. You want a cool stat? Oh, yeah, give me a cool stat. stat. 
Okay, shout out to Quick okay, Shot. Okay, it better be about yeah, Dragon. Okay. The only two teams that okay. King's Zone have dropped okay. games to okay. since the second round robin started are SKT and Afrika Freaks. Five games wow. to SKT, yeah. one game to Afrika, no games to anyone else. That is a fun step. Exactly. Damn, Quick Shot would be really happy I know. you called that a quick step. I didn't even need anyone in my ear. I just knew. <laughs> Well, I'm excited to see what this team is going to be able to do against King Zone, but I'm also excited to see what has really made them tick as we get another MVP interview with these guys. It's a lot of damage coming out from aiming, but honestly, it's those two solo lanes killing creeps way better than their opponents that really push them over the line here. The Afrika Freaks feels like they have fixed a lot of the problems. It's only three matches in, but man, starting to make me a believer, Papa Smithy. And you know what? I'm still a believer in the Trundle versus Sejuani. It didn't win this time, but shout out to Mujin and the Hawa Life coaching staff. LCK teams, please don't be results orientated. That's a good matchup into Sejuani. Yep, that's exactly right. So that is only that's going to be on Saturday, okay? The uh, King Zone versus Afrika series. Make sure you're here for that one. That is going to be very exciting. You we've and got, I will be in the chat. Yeah, we've got a lot of huge. Well, actually, I'm going to be uh, on the broadcast, Pop Smith. Oh, you're switching it up. Yeah, this I did a bit week. of a okay. switcheroo okay. with the old Brendan okay. Valdez, so I'll okay. be there with you on Saturday alongside LS. But uh, Sunday, you'll have your your Valdez. Don't worry, I'm not going to deny you, uh, Valdez. No one would dare. No, 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 no. Of course not. Of course not. We can't ruin the balance or anything like that here at the LCK. As we get the MVP, it's going to be Kane towards the top side. Three zero and six. He uh, played some Aatrox into a counter matchup and smashed the game. I'd give him an MVP for that. I think it is richly deserved in game number two. You and I on the ball with our MVP voting so far I today. voted for Ucal, actually. I just uh, I thought his uh, play was more exciting. The fans <laughs> didn't know that. You could have gotten away with a freebie. No, I'm not getting... No, I don't take any freebies, Papa Smitty. It's a compliment from Papa Smitty. You don't get many of those. No, it's a lie from Papa Smitty. That's what that was. Uh... <laughs> damned if you do, damned if you don't with this one. Yeah, apparently. But I just wanted to stay honest. I'm not going to let you give me any freebies, Papa. I want to earn it. And that time I was incorrect when it came to the MVP, MVP vote. But how disappointed would you have been if it was you, Carl? Pretty disappointed. All right, fair enough. Well, we are going to go down to Dread and Keen, who are standing on side with Mina. So here's g for some translation. Thank you very much. Thank you. This is g with Safe Interview Translation. We're going to be hearing from Dread, Keen, picking up two victory up against Hala Life Esports. So how did you prepare for today's series? Just as usual, well, we just did our best to pull off the plays that we do in the screens. Okay, this is your first MVP interview with Summer's play. How do you feel right now? Well, I think I'm feeling better and better going through the split, so I think I'll, I have to work even harder. Well, actually, a lot of people expected more of the fights because it's a game between two aggressive teams, but nothing really happened much. Well, that's what I expected as well, but this is, this is actually a competitive game, so we were trying to go a little more defensively and go safe. And Dreads. So Mujin and he plays Garner Thresh composition, did you expect that? No, not at all. Then what kind of well, feedback went back and forth to pick before going into the games after the pick and back? We were expecting them to go play around the bot lane, so I was also preparing to counter play it. So we have this highlight over here. We could see you popping off with your crazy mechanics. That kick. Do you remember that? Did you expect that play from Mujin? Well, I just saw Skarno running toward us, so I just kicked him away. <laughs> Moving on to game number two, Hana Life locked in Trundle Jungle. Did you expect that? Well, I did. And you played Halo Blade Sejuani. Was that a Connor rune? Well, if I go with Aftershock, it's, uh, Trundle Ultimate will be a big counter for me, so I just went with Halo Black Blades. I just wanted to stack up four stacks as soon as possible. 
You have been playing Aatrox today. However, A Aatrox has a very low win rate by your stats. Well, Aatrox go with a lot of blind picks, so it has a lot of hard times during the laning phase. So that's why he has a very poor result recently. But however, you, you were just giving so much pressure to Fiora today. How was that possible? Well, I had vision around Bujin a lot, so I was able to put a lot of pressure during the laning phase. Would you like to give some credit to Dread? Well, his performance is on point. Keen, you said that you want no more in 1v9. So are you trusting your teammates to like the game, the way the game goes nowadays? Whenever we win the, win the game, I think I got carried. So it's a little bit sad, but it's really comfortable. But we do have a highlight of your performance to this game as well. This is the uh, team fight that you guys aced out the Hana players. So what was actually what was going on? We knew that they were grouped up over there, so we were ready for this team fight, and I keep it in. But I think we were just able to just grab some good results. You were so low on health, but you were so boldly going inside. Yeah, I was. I was a little bit afraid, afraid when my HP went so low, but I just somehow did it. Once again, congratulations on the win. And another, I, around Africa, it's you called my check, you know? And also, we could see a lot of follow from the teammates. However, he always stays silent. I think you call is paying too much attention to the off-the-record stuff. But if I... Well, so if I add on to that, it's going to be too much, so I'm just staying quiet and remaining quiet. <laughs> Your next game will be up against Kingzone. This is the most hyped matchup this week. You guys, both teams are on the best performance. As long as we perform as we do normally, I think we can win. <laughs> What about you, Kim? What kind of strategy are you going to bring in? Kingzone, they are doing really great recently. But if we do as we practice and if we do our best, I think it's going to be good. I think, we, I think we can pick up good results. Thank you very much for this interview, and I'm going to pass it back to our casters. Thank you. Thank you so much, g -san. and welcome back to the cast desk. Ladies and gentlemen, where we are, sorry to say, that we're going to have a huge break. We Afrika are. really dealt with our Hama life far too quickly for our liking because we like to move the LCK as one fluid motion into the next series, but instead we're going to have to have about an hour-long break. A bit over an hour-long break. Also want to point out one thing. Yeah. Dredd is a real strapping young lad. He's he actually... is, and he's gigantic, exactly. Papa Smithy. He is so tall. He's from the kind of tall school of thought. We don't yeah. usually have those sort of people. I just wanted to point out because it's so conspicuous because you always talk about young player growing up in the LCK. Also, he's just getting bigger. Yeah, and he's really young as well. It's like, I feel like they're building them bigger now these days, Papa Smithy. And know? usually when you get counter-jungled by this mechanical jungle, you're like, oh yeah, <laughs> yeah, would yeah. They, would they, wouldn't want to meet me in a dark alley. I'm not sure I'm no, 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 to no, beat I'd... him on the rift or on a I don't, want, I don't want to meet him anyway. I want that's, to avoid him. Yeah, that's why I've avoided playing in high ELO uh, League of Legends, Papa Smithy, is because of uh, because of Dread most definitely. But as you can see, we've achieved some equilibrium here as Afrika Freaks move up into third place against Hummel Life, who fall all the way back down again. Blue does it best, apparently. King Zone yeah. and Afrika rocking the blue, and those boys in blue will face later in the week. You, you pointed out, Atlas, they talked about it in the interview. Kingzone and Afrika feel like they're the most informed team. Griffin have kind of just willed themselves to 2-0, but I need to see a convincing victory against Sandbox in our second series to really start aggrandizing Griffin like we have so frequently in their two splits in the LCK so far. And after Afrika Freaks dealt with Harmo Life so comfortably as well, I mean, the Sandbox victory over this team doesn't look quite as strong. So what can they do to bounce back after their 0-2? against Kingzone. Man, there are so many things to think about and so much time to think about them as well, Papa Smithy, because we have about an hour's break before we're back with Sandbox versus Griffin. We'll see you then.